huge presentation. Um, I thought, since you finished your family trees and you're looking for something to do, this <laughs> might give us something fresh to look at, okay? Um, so, uh, we, we're all locked up in lockdown. Uh, some of us made better use of it than others. Uh, some of us might have something done productively for their family tree. Um, I could give you a nice uh, presentation on Lidl's biscuits, I went through the whole lot. <laughs> so, you might have something of use to somebody else. And in this room there might be somebody that's got something that's of use to you. Okay. So, as family historians we like to share our stuff. And this is some ways that we can share and we can pick up other people's stuff. And it's all for the magic word of free. <laughs> So the hive mind, I was going to make all these bee jokes and I thought, no, I better not, because <laughs> it's the end of the afternoon. So, uh, so I've got a nice, very nice sort of like pattern of everybody talking to everybody else online. So this is, your, this is our free advert. Um, this is the advert for the business that we do actually accept volunteer material. And I'm looking for Eddie, because uh, he, uh, he gave us a, a quick run through of what we're getting through at the moment. What we've got is we've actually got a hard drive that will never, ever, ever go online. And it's storing material that's been uploaded and given to the society. And this is solely for the society's members' use. Um, I believe when we first started a long, long time ago, we were asking for pedigrees. And I think there's a set of those, but we've got to work out how to upload them. And there's, there's going to be stuff in there that's going to be of use just for Cork people. So if you've got something just for Cork that you would like to share, save for the future, then we're here. <laughs> and uh, you can email uh, the society and say, I've got my great grandfather's. Um, pedigree and would you like it and uh, if they will say yes and you can send us a copy so that's one way of storing court material the members have access to this hard drive material as Eddie was talking about earlier today and that is uh, solely on an internet basis so if you send in your request we will have a look for you and tell you if there's anything there so I'm going to be looking for my dad's stuff at the moment um, as and when I get the chance. Um, so there is stuff, um, there's a lot of material for Cork, as you know, um, but we've got a few bit of extra special bits. So that's the advert over for Cork, General Logical Society. So, um, lockdown projects. Anybody do a, a family history lockdown project, lockdown project at all? Or were you all around middle with me? <laughs> <laughs> or one or two, right. One or two brave souls. Anybody having a really good nosy online during lockdown? I was never on it. So you'll know this stuff about and um, all these sort of stories on Twitter. Oh, I finished my book during lockdown. It's going to be published next week. There's an awful lot of historical um, non-fiction material coming out, which will be of use to you as well. I'm just amazed at all these books that have been springing out everywhere. But they are around, so keep your eye on them. Um, and they'll be coming out in, in, your, in the local bookshops. Definitely, and possibly online and Amazon as well. So, um, what have we got? We've got lockdown projects. Um, has anybody got um, notebooks or bits of paper where they went down the archives and made a list and it never got any further? I've got notebooks full of it. Um, and they're no use to me because I've used them or they weren't my family anyway. Um, anybody got photographs of places and buildings wandering around during lockdown? Me. <laughs> I've got to go out the afternoon, I must do something constructive, and I took the camera with me. I've got loads of photographs from, from the last three, three years. Um, with burial grounds, I think I'm, I, I was down with the, you know, it was 12 o'clock, you know, like, like Jane used to say, get out at 12 o'clock and you can get a good photograph. So I was down the burial ground at 12 o'clock, the camera ready to get the sun onto the stone. Uh, so you've got all this stuff floating about. Um, is it any good to me? Probably. Possibly, I kept thinking, oh, that'd be great. I'll take a photograph of that and then I'll use it in a, in a presentation sometime. But I've got like 2,000 of them, so I'm not going to use all of them. Um, so perhaps somebody else can use those. Um, so I've got all this stuff. Um, also as well, um, I might have got as far as I can online. Um, you know, you've come to full stop and you know that you've been everywhere you can think of. 
So there could be brick walls there that are sitting waiting for you to play with. You don't know where to start because you've done all the big pay, all the big sites, you've done the Google, you've got desperate and you've gone on to some silly, silly places and you've run out of ideas. And you've run out of places to look and where to go next. So there are family historians out there internationally doing the same thing. So we've all been hooked in and locked in and we've got stuff. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly look at several websites which host material which have been shared by other volunteers. So other family historians have been sharing their stuff. And for some opportunities for broadening our own family history research. So what they've been sharing will be useful to me. What I've got in my notebooks and the back of my envelopes will be useful to them. So these are working sites. They're not pretty. They're very idiosyncratic, and the, the print will, you know, will vary from beautiful to absolutely awful because there'll be stuff up there that's been there for a while, and it may not have been tidily uh, uploaded. So you have to take rough with the smooth. But here are some that will be useful to you. Well, before I start saying further, I'm going to give um, the society my notes and all the website um, tags so that you can look in your, you know, your own time. Uh, they've not come up very well. I had to do screenshots because I wasn't trusting the Wi-Fi. <coughs> I didn't want to trust the Wi-Fi to put the website. So um, if you can't see very well on the screen, you will have a set of notes you can refer to and hopefully with live links. <coughs> right, so the first one is our, one of our partners. I actually use the magic. Can you, see the, can you see the cursor okay? Yeah. Good start, isn't it? So, um, this is Ireland Genealogy Projects, and we've actually been in partnership with them for 10 years now, unbelievably. Um, we we, we um, present Cork for <coughs> on their behalf, and the surviving director from Ireland Genealogy, Gen Ireland Genealogy Projects is actually a Cork woman. Um, so. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, could you blow up a tiny bit more? Uh, I can't. No, it's it's almost as good as it gets. Yeah. But you will have the notes from me, and you will have um, the live links. That's yeah. the best I can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, if, if I blew them up any further, the print would disappear. Um, it's it's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, so it's Ireland Genealogy Projects, igp-web.com, igp-web.com. So this site, I'm just reading it out for you so you can just listen in. This site is a free repository of information provided by volunteers for the use in genealogical research. If you know the county, you can click below to see the files that belong to that county. If you don't know, try our search engine. Try different spellings as names can vary. Now, what's good about the IGP is that everything you stand up belongs to you, and it's all credited to you. Um, and if you've actually copied some notes from the National Archives, if you stick that on as well, um, the National Archives will get a free credit. So, um, especially photographers, we've had trouble with photographs going missing out of this website. Photographers own the copyright to their work. Do not copy photos for other websites. So they a discrete set of um, images belonging on this website. Now, as you can see, I'll just move the cursor because it's, it's the way this screen is playing up. There we go. Uh, you can see there's it's all Ireland, so every county's got its own link. Um, so we're treating the island as a, a discrete unit. So this is igp-web.com. Now, the absolute star of this is the search engine on it. It's actually linked to Google, and it's very efficient, so you can actually get results from this website through Google by putting your keyword in. The keyword search on IGP, it can be by surname, it can be by location, it can be blacksmiths, it can be any word that you want to use, and that will pull up all the information that you need on this website. 
Now, because it's volunteer information, then we all know that you never trust anybody else's research. Number one, you always do your own research. So, look at it, see, ah, is that reasonable? Is that possibly a place where my work could be? And then you use it as a bouncing off. So I actually found one of my family, I couldn't work out how they had got into Dublin, but I found a whole clutch of them in Kells. So that was somewhere for me to look next. So I, you know, and, and as you, if you're uploading stuff, then you know that somebody else is going to double check your stuff. So you search by keyword, search by county, I'll work down, I'll show you that in a minute, and then um, your searches will come up in the search engine. So they're the longest running free website, so the, uh, practically as soon as the internet got going, IGP got going as well. So it's IGP dashweb.com So, what can you send them? And here's a nice list. Can you read it? It's okay. It's coming up better than I thought. Right, so here's your list. Um, what I've done is I stuck Cork, obviously, in the search engine and it gave me the Cork link. Now, all these headings are all the same for every county, but obviously as you go in, there's going to be different stuff. So, cemetery records, Church records, if you've got, you know, like five births um, that don't belong to you, you can send them in and they'll go in, into, the, into the big uh, hive. Census substitutes, um, directories, there's a lot of directories on there actually, um, like on, on pages, you know, so like C, <laughs> C for Dublin, you know, that's, it, it's, it's a bit, almost like a fever for the genealogists, you know, but you don't know what you're going to get until you put, put the keyword into, into the search engine. We, they, they, the site is known for its headstones, <coughs> but there's an awful lot of headstones. I know an awful lot of people who photograph headstones to send to IGP, uh, and they're very efficient, they're, they're, they're good genealogists, they know what they're looking for. And what happens is when you send your image, somebody in the ether will check all your headstone images and do a transcript of the writing on that image and then you compare it to the person who's taken a photograph, their transcript, and hopefully get a mesh uh, of the two. Um, so uh, I got a message saying, oh, you're in Kerry next week, can you go and check uh, this web, this stone, because it doesn't make sense. So I was on my hands and knees in this, in, uh, <laughs> in this uh, Catholic church burial ground, you know, with, with all the, you know, the tape, like, do not enter, and I'm on my hands and knees trying to read this, this actual stone. And it did say what we thought it said, but you know, somebody's got to check it. Uh, so, headstones are very good. Um, the memorial cards, which seems to be a theme today, uh, I was going to talk about that. If you have got memorial cards um, that you think are of any use to you, then uh, the IGP will take images of them. And I was going to recommend that if you, I know with my family, we kept them in the missile, so, so whoever's the missile was, I got a, a series of memorial cards stuck through. They're probably the same as our family. Uh, keep those cards together, don't split them up, because they, they have meaning, because they're within another, another source. So you keep your memorial cards together, send them up in that batch. Um, so if you photograph them, or scan them in, send them up. Um, and uh, they're, they're, as we've said earlier, a fantastic resource for, for research. Uh, miscellaneous, that's a good one, you never know what's going to come in there. Um, and obituaries as well, if somebody's copied in the obituary they don't use, or well, they're not using, they'll stick that up. So have a look in there, um, there's so, that's the sort of things we'd like, and also the sort of things you can find. And at the bottom of every page, there is actually contact details to ask, would you like this stuff, and how, how can we get it to you? So there is actually a process of, of, of uploading material uh, once you make contact with, with um, with the, the person at the other end. Right, so it's igp-webs.com, Island Genealogy Projects. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I got a bit carried away with myself here because I did know that there are other genweb.nets which are related to us on IGP. So there is a usgenweb.org, and that does the same procedure, but for the USA. 
And I went in and had a look, but they haven't got the depth of material that we've got. But if you've got something in the diaspora in the US, if you know they've gone to Illinois, it might be worth jumping in and have a look and see what Illinois has got, they've got a thin of use. So it's usgenweb.org, I'll give that later in, in, um, on the notes. usgenweb.org and they were related to us at one point, but I think they've gone, gone the wrong way. Now, there is another one that I did hear about, so I got onto this. Um, and this is the world, this is the world genweb.net, which obviously takes in the whole world. Now, what they've done with that website is they've just kept adding stuff to it. So it's got like a big machine there, and it's massive. And I found it very difficult to get into, really hard to actually get into that first portal. So what I would say with you, if you really want to go and have a look at what Singapore Irish are doing, then is to go in through the um, Google way and put in worldgenweb.net Singapore and then use those as keywords and then try and search in. Because I got into the portal page with all the um, uh, countries on it and I couldn't get any further because it just couldn't load for me. It looks to be absolutely massive. But you know, it's worth looking at. So again, that will go into the notes. World Gen, G E N, web dot net. So those three are come out of the same box, but they go their own way. Okay? Gen web. Gen web. And some of you will recognise Gen web and Roots web, so you can see which we you know where they came from originally. Um, as you know, Roots web is actually closing. Surely. Um, so if you have actually got anything on, on Roots Web that might be of interest, you might need to download it. They are providing a limited service in the future. But have a look on the archive on Roots Web. If there's anything there, you know, grab it and download it. Right, so this is what I've been trying to get into this lot for years. What you've got to do is you've got to have your own surname. You've got to have a special surname. And people kept pinching my surname, so I couldn't join. This is the Guild of One Name Studies. And this is onename.org. Onename.org. Used to be called the Goons. And those of a certain age were all about laughing and make jokes. Um, but it's now, it's onename.org. One-name.org. The Guild of One's Name Studies. Yeah. Right, so if we have a look up here, these are the people that belong, well, the, the, the actual numbers for the guild. So we've, whoops, no, no, go back. Right, so this is a huge website. It's actually won awards recently. I think they got another award last year. Part of it is public, so anybody can use it. Part of it belongs to the, web, the members. So you can, you can make good use of this even if you don't, you, you haven't got your own special name. So the first thing we all do is go, is your surname here? And we go, oh, go and have a look. So here it is. So you use that to search. And that's an open search box, so you can help yourself there. Um, it's got um, 2,373 members, 2,232 studies, 7,910 surnames. Now it's come out of the English European system. So it's mainly, that's, that's sort of its core membership, are going to be English surnames, or surnames that have come out of the English uh, diaspora. But, um, as, as we all know, other people can hop in, and I've got a couple of Irish surnames and they're not just complained yet. So um, have a look. First of all, what you're doing is, you're going in and seeing what they've got. Yeah. Have you got anything that used to me that I haven't got already? And also you're linking in with the experts for that surname. So if you've got a surname and you've got so as you can with it, first of all you're going to be linking in with somebody else who's got information or it might even be related to you. And thirdly, either you're going to actually get stuff that may not be out into the general um, you know, into the general world. So that's that's um, the first hit that you get. The second hit is that they, the websites may provide more information. So if you have a website about your name, you can upload it to the Guild and they will give you a link. 
Um, there's also material that the Guild provides from the stuff that's been uploaded by their members and they've made databases available to, to us as, as the general public. So as a Guild member, how to join us? First of all, you have to do a negotiation with anybody you find on that surname search to see if their varied, varied spellings coincide with what you want to do. So obviously if they grab that varied spelling, then you can't have it. <laughs> so you've got to find some, some other way of getting in. Um, so the variants, the, what you do is you claim so many variant spellings of your surname as well as your surname. And then you become the expert, technically, on that, those spellings. And you gather the information, any, so any um, vital records, any church records, any mentions in the newspaper, any pedigrees, I'm collecting pedigrees at the moment, um, anything that, that, that pertains to that surname or the variant of that surname, that's what you do. Um, and then you then, I, you can upload it straight onto their website, or if you're making your own website up, or you've got your own way of working, then you can provide that link. Now the new thing that obviously is coming in is the Y-DNA, that that's beginning to mesh into it as well. So you might find that some of the surname um, uh, admins are also running a Y-DNA program alongside it. Now they may not be using the AT-DNA yet. That's a bit, you know, it's a bit sort of like far down the line at the moment. But there, there is this potential there um, to, go, to go that way. Uh, so it is mainly surname research. And as a member, you get a lot of support from the experts, and you get um, you get your own web page, and you get advice. And there's also regular conferences. I'm very busy on Twitter, and very busy on Facebook. So they're, they're worth looking for. Right. So how many sorted your surname? And you've got everything that you actually want to find out ever about your surname. You can start looking at places, places to research. So if you've got homes or addresses or you've got, you've got countries where your surname or your family are, this is the place to go. Now, as you can see, it's not very sort of glamorous. This is a one place studies directory, and again, it's free. So it's oneplacestudy.org. And what it is, it's basically a telephone directory. That's, what it, that's how it functions. And if you have got a website that belongs to your place, you can send the link to them and they will put it on this directory for free, so you get free, um, free access to it. Um, it's out to the big wide world. So the One Place Studies directory provides a searchable index of One Place Studies worldwide with a verified online presence. For each location, a link is provided to another website or platform where more information can be found or requested. Inclusion is 100% free and we don't request or store any personal details. So you, it's, it's safe enough, you know, you, you're not going to be getting um, you know, messages from people in Nigeria asking you for, for money or anything. Um, the, it's only the actual website that you, you, you are presenting. Now, I got into this accidentally during lockdown and I got to Twitter. They're very, very busy on Twitter, One Place Studies. Um, what was happening was the likes of you and me going out photographing locally and they're going, oh, in my One Place Study, I've got these and I'm putting the photographs up. So I thought, oh, there's, there's something going on here. Um, so I got into watching what they were doing, really, really interesting stuff. The One Place can be as small as a set of, uh, set of houses, it can be one house, it can be as big as a town, it can be whatever you want it to be. The only proviso is that it's got to have a boundary around it, a defined boundary, and whatever's within that boundary, that's what you actually present in your one place study. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, they're living in a castle or living around the corner in a cottage, all those people have got an equal status when you're doing your research. Um, so, as you can see from the list, probably, yes, you can see better than me, um, it is an early day. Ireland is mainly in the north, the northern counties are very into it. Uh, we've got a couple of um, studies up there for Ireland, and Jane Howland has got Tuller up there, her website. 
Ventura is on there, um, but not much else really. Mallow have got something up, but it's, it's a Roots web, website, so I don't know how much longer it's going to stop. Um, so you can choose, you can look the diaspora, you can look anyway, you can set your own up. You can, and here's, here's what they're looking for if you decide to do your own one place study. So these are the type of headings that we're looking at. So Australia, they, they're very into it. And if you've got Australian diaspora, you might find that might be useful for you to have a look and see what they've got. So they've got a, a total of 109 studies. They've got 105 communities, which is a good number. Uh, no single streets in Australia, apparently. Um, they've got a single property. So somebody's been doing house history research and they've put their website up. Um, and cemeteries, two cemeteries. Um, wartime, I'm not sure. I think that's something to do with um, what happened during the war in that one place. And so they must have tracked it for sort of, you know, like the First World War, Second World War, and they've tracked all the material in that, in that one place for that, that timeline. Um, no disasters in Australia, apparently. But you could, you could actually say, you know, like other than, which would have been a disaster. They, that could go up as a one place study. Um, now, that is all three. If you want to join the one place study community, you can do that as well. And it runs as a parallel with a one name study. So it's one name study .org. Um, Yeah, one place .org. Um, And again, it's a very similar provision. But that, that is going to be really going. I, I reckon shortly there's going to be a lot more going on. And also, as, as well, if we've been doing um, research during lockdown, I mean, I've been in, up and down my lane that many times, I could tell you practically every stone in it. Um, if you've been doing a project study during lockdown, that would translate very well onto this one name directory. Right, so the last one is the one. This is the left, this is the one that's come out the left field. This is the outside <coughs> runner. Is anybody involved in Ireland reaching out? <coughs> yeah, great, good. <coughs> just, just hide five minutes of the presentation. Um, Ireland reaching out, for those of us who are not involved, is parish based and it's to do with reaching out with people who've left our parish and reconnecting with them. So it's, it's reconnecting with the diaspora or even people who've just moved out of the county. Uh, so, it's parish based, the parish decides whether they want to actually give that offer that service. So some parishes are really busy and some parishes still need somebody to set it up. All volunteer based and it's all, it's all based around the centre of the parish. So the parish decides on access, it decides on what it's going to um, release and it's deciding how much it's going to help. So. The um, islandexo.com is the website which everybody uses, that, that's the hub, islandexo.com and on there you, you um, advertise your wares, what you're doing, what you're not doing. Then the other thing that I find really useful is that people write into you. So my family are from Kilgarvan, well we think it's from Kilgarvan, it was it was my great granddad who left in 1875, and he always said he was from Kilgarvan, but with nothing in writing, and this is his name. So that's the sort of stuff you're getting. And then somebody in Kilgarvan go, oh yeah, I know who it was. It was my great granddad's brother. You know, so you're getting that connection going on. Um, so those, those, um, I find those, uh, the notice board really, really, really interesting. But what um, Island XO, Island Reaching Out are offering now is they're going out to the diaspora and say, have you got any photographs? Have you got any, any pictures? Have you got any information? Can you send it back to the parish? So it's coming the other way now. The information's coming back to us. And um, what they're offering is, um, can we have um, your people, your photos, your important events in your home country where you live now? So, you know, my, my uh, um, so-and-so got, um, you know, got first prize in the Debs Dance last week, send it back, that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? They're not looking for big, you know, amazing material, they're looking for everyday material. Send it back to the parish and link it to the landmarks and places in Ireland. Send your stuff back to the parish we're interested. And you can choose from EXO people, EXO buildings, or EXO timeline to get started. And I have to this because we here, if we run out of material, you don't know who's out there, 
in Illinois, who's got a photograph of your great-granddad, and it might be coming back onto this website quite soon. So that's a brief look at of what you can do and where you can find it. So um, I'll just go quickly through what I've talked about here. Cork Genealogical Society, anything for Cork, we don't have to see. Uh, so when it's Cork, we don't mind. Um, what we're asking for, um, IGP, Island Genealogy Projects, accepts small uploads, anything Ireland, one picture, anything at all, you'll, you'll retain your copyright. Guild of One Name Studies, you can upload any documents or references to the surname, and it's an international base. So wherever that surname is, you, you record that information. One Place Study, upload to the website, um, gather data from, copy my own writing, um, register it, gather data from a specific location with a specific boundary, and that's the only, um, that's the only proviso you've got for that website, you've got to have a boundary on it. And then Ireland reaching out, looking for Irish heritage material on an international basis, coming back to the location of the home place. So, thank you very much for listening, and good luck with your own research, and keep us in.